Please note, we would like to make it very clear, we are totally against the form of discipline described in the articles and accounts being used on minors and non-consenting adults. Although some of these accounts are fictional, and others may be an exaggerated reality, none of them are too far from the truth of what really happened back in those days. If you are enjoying our stories, please do subscribe to this channel. We will be posting many more stories as time goes by. Growing up, I was mostly looked after by my grandmother, as my parents worked long hours and were often out of the city, or indeed the country, for extended periods. As this was the case, my grandmother lived in our house and was mine and my sibling's guardian at these times. She was fairly old-fashioned in her ways and certainly in her beliefs when it came to corporal punishment. She would often spank us for the slightest transgressions when we were young things like not listening, rudeness, not saying the please and a thank you, unruliness etc. This was to teach us respect for others and to be polite and courteous. We also received sore bottoms for doing wrong to others and for any reports of misbehavior from school, the spankings for these offenses were to teach us to behave in general. When we were young, these spankings were delivered over her knee, either with her hand or a wooden spoon. As we got older, her methods of discipline changed. We would no longer be put over her knee, but have to bend over a convenient object such as a bed, stool, ottoman, or the arm of the sofa. This would be for the slipper. I was somewhat prepared for this change when it came, as I had witnessed my elder siblings being punished in this way, as well as some of my cousins when they stayed with us. The change I really dreaded, though, was getting a dose of the cane from my grandmother. As with the other forms of corporal punishment, I had witnessed many of my older siblings and cousins getting whacked, so I knew what to expect. Inevitably, the day finally arrived when I received my first caning from my grandmother. The punishment was for getting a bad report from our neighbor and friend of grandmother's who happened to teach at the school I attended. She was only too happy to tell my grandmother that I'd played up in school, and indeed she had reported my older siblings in the same manner in the past. My grandmother thanked her for her report and showed her to the door. I was already nervous, but when my grandmother came back into the living room with one of the canes in her hand, my stomach sank. She lectured me about my wrongdoing, then told me to get ready and get in position. I prepared myself as I'd done for years before for the slipper, then turned away and bent over the sofa, with my hips over the arm and my body draped across the seat. Grandmother told me in case I hadn't guessed, that I was now old quite enough to be getting caned and that she would be giving it just as I'd seen my siblings and cousins get done. She then surprised me by going to say that she'd given the cane many times during her days of teaching and at Sunday school. That got my mind racing about just how many bottoms she had beaten like this, but it wasn't long before I was concentrating on something else. She lined the cane up against my bare bum, then without warning raised it and brought it back down hard. It was like nothing I had felt before the sting and burn was so intense. I had already been sobbing from shame and fear but this made my cry out loud. Somehow I managed to keep in the punishment position, as I knew from experience that moving was a grave offence in her eyes and would result in a more severe dose. I received a further eleven strokes, making a total of twelve her usual number. I was crying my eyes out but managed to blurt out an apology before being allowed to go to my room.